Cardone here. Welcome to Power Players. Every week I bring you somebody that can, you can use that will help you add power to your life. Today I have with me Robin Crane. She is the infamous, the notorious. You guys have been asking, who is the financial G-spot chick? And I have her here today. She's host of Financial G-spot on uh, whatever it takes. She's been on Fox Business. You've probably seen her articles on Motley Crue. Where else do you write? Your Tango. Just got something on Dirk Risky. Lots of relationship type awesome. sites. Awesome. Awesome. So, so happy to have you. She lives in New Jersey. We're in Miami today. So she's like, Grant, I need some warm weather. That's awesome. But you can't wear that dress oh, uh, in New Jersey. Today, I can right? and I freeze. <laughs> yeah, but not those shoes. Okay, you guys yeah, probably get, we'll get a shoot. We'll get a shot of the shoes before she leaves. But so, Robin, um, what do you do? You're a financial planner, financial consultant. What what is that? What does it mean? Well, my background is as a financial planner, so I got the certified financial planner certificate. So that's all. Woo! What does yeah. that mean, right? Yeah, right. Um, but uh, really, what I focus on is more of uh, like being a money and relationship coach, because as a financial planner, the your role is to help people grow their money which is great, but sometimes they don't have it. Right. Um, and oftentimes the biggest problem is that people are running these patterns and the patterns are holding them back from getting them what they want to get wealth. It's mm -hmm. not the actual growing the money that's the biggest issue. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Cause I, I mean, I, I had a guy say, hey, tell somebody else they needed a financial plan. I'm like, why would you tell them that? They don't have any money. Right. I said, you just want to sell them some insurance. <laughs> so I think there's some confusion in, in the, the people that there's a lot of losses around money and financial planning. So I w I'm, I'm so glad to have you here today. Tell me before you got involved in this, who, who, who is Robin Crane? And why do you deserve to be a power player and sit right there? Before I got involved in financial planning? Yeah, I mean, when you country. were a little girl, where'd you come oh, from? Yeah. What, what influence would make you who you are? Good question. Um, well, I mean, growing up, I grew up in like a, I would say upper middle class, maybe middle so class, upper middle class. So you're a rich white chick. Uh, rich, rich Jew. Yeah. Oh. I even got the Jewish thing. Wow. They call me a chap. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. We weren't really rich actually, but um, we but definitely. Upper middle class. Uh, I think upper middle class, but we. I always say we acted more like middle class because my parents were, um, all into saving. You right. know, definitely, weren't big spenders. Um, but valued family, and so we uh, we have nice vacations. Coupons, clipping coupons. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights is huge. Do you know my dad? Okay. I eat all your food. It. Eat yeah, all your food. Yeah, Did that yeah. freak you out when I said that? That's Turn off the lights because I'm so anal about that. Even still, uh -huh. I don't want to waste energy. You know. Yeah. Just, oh, it's never waste. You know that yeah, yeah, that totally. kind of mentality. Absolutely. And my dad has a business sense as well, and he actually. Um, he went into business and he was always interested in finance and so I learned a lot from him but I actually um, my first business was swimming lessons I taught swimming lessons so I had kind of an entrepreneurial flair what age? At the beginning. Uh, I think the first I was I would think I was 18 maybe 17 okay but it was great because I had this whole um, like I started off just going to people's homes and I charge like eight bucks for a half an hour lesson. I thought that was so cool because and I was you getting... knew people that had swimming pools at their home. Yeah, it was California. So I grew up in California. Okay. So okay. yeah, I was I, I babysat people. And so I started with that. And my mom was a pre kindergarten teacher. So she was my pimp. It was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so my business so she's got the really pipeline. Fast. She's yeah. feeding them off to you every year. They're just learning to swim. They're four and five years old. And so I kept getting all these people at first. I was going from house to house driving along and Every year, I kept raising my prices and raising my prices, and finally got to a point where it was like nine to five in my parents' backyard. They had a pool, made awesome. it easy, and I was charging. And did your mom keep a, nice a percentage of the business? No, 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 she would never ever think that. My mom. Yeah. Your not dad make, would that. My my dad, no, he 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 wouldn't want to take it from me, but um. He, my dad, who's more cautious, would always say like he was concerned about the liability. Uh -huh. You know, having people in the pool Somebody's and making sure drown. he had enough insurance. And, but he didn't make me pay for the insurance. When did you meet Robin Crane, the the entrepreneur? The first time you met that person was it before the swimming thing? I had to be because you know I don't remember entrepreneurial ideas necessary uh -huh. necessarily, but I was always. A go-getter. I always wanted more, and I was, you know, even with grades, like I wanted the A's. You know, I was a straight A uh, student. Um, just wanted to always do my best, and kind of 
never really felt like my best was good enough. Like more, uh -huh. more, 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 more. Well, so where do you where do you think that? Because everybody who sat in that chair, I hear that some theme about I wanted to do better, I wanted to do more, I knew there was an opportunity. Where do you think that comes from? I actually think it comes from an insecurity. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, awesome, dude. I love that. <laughs> yeah, when I was when I was little, I mean, I remember probably around age, I would say seven or eight. Um, but I'm sure it happened way earlier, but I remember thinking I was really stupid. Uh -huh. And specifically, there was a time where I, uh, I had an opportunity to, opportunity to be in the gifted program, and so I was all excited, and I was like, oh, I can be gifted, I'm smart, right? And so I went into this little room, I remember sitting on this chair, and there were a couple people out there like just asking me these questions, and I was trying to be really smart, and they asked me um, what a tripod was. I totally didn't know. Uh -huh. And I specifically remember going home to my mom and telling her, you know, I said, they asked me what a tripod was. I didn't know what it was. And she says, you don't know what a tripod is? Tripod, you know, tripod three. <laughs> and I was like, so stupid. Wow. And it's not like I'm not blaming my mom, but what I realized now looking back, especially like with my mom's language patterns, actually we have the show, the financial G spot show with my parents coming up. Oh, awesome. And she even says something, oh, stupid me or something like that. Uh -huh. So she ran these language patterns thinking she was stupid and so I adopted that belief. So, so the language pattern, your mom ran, what do you mean she ran? So my mom would always say things like, you know, oh, I'm not smart like that or oh, stupid oh, oh, me. Oh, she's or, saying these these, saying, yeah, got it. Yeah, saying these things out loud. I want to talk more about the, yeah. the, the, these language patterns, okay? <laughs> hey, you're with Robin Crane today. This is Power Players. Every week I find somebody generous enough to share their time that puts you in power. Stay with us. You're watching Whatever It Takes Network. This is Power Players. Welcome back to Power Players. Grant Cardone here. I have Robin Crane with me. You have a book on Power Players. Okay, how to overcome your money issues. Mm -hmm. And 10 easy steps. And where can people find that? You can go to robincrane.com slash free book. Okay. And we're, pro we're probably right. going to figure out a way to have it right here on this site. We might fix that before this even hits. But It'll mysteriously appear yeah, yeah, in the graphics. Yeah. So let's go back to what you were talking about. You're, you're, you're brought up upper middle class, rich little white Jewish chick. <laughs> Felt rich, had more than other people, I, right? I didn't think I was rich, but I felt like we... You're in Beverly Hills, man. You're, you're no, taking swimming classes. No, I wasn't in Beverly classes. Hills. I was in Northern California. You weren't in but, West Covina. Well, we were all... In, no, I don't even know Compton. what it is. No, I wasn't okay. in Compton, okay. no. See, Compton, but I like that song. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I definitely felt like we had choices. I definitely felt like we had a great life, a uh, great quality of life, which is very, you know, some, some value that I completely took with me. That's how we live our life today. Um, but because we were always kind of pinching pennies, I never thought, oh, we can do anything. Like, let's just, you know, go spend the money, right, spend, right. spend, spend. I didn't feel like rich, but I felt like we had what we needed. Yeah, and and, and so I really relate to that because yeah. we, we had more than others, mm -hmm. but there was a message underneath all that saying, hey, we don't have enough. Turn it off, eat it all. Don't spend, don't waste anything. Right. And it wasn't really a hustle message. It was a conservation and a yes. contraction message. Exactly. So now you were talking about patterns, mm -hmm. and and I think that ties into this idea of like save and protect. What what did you mean about your mom's patterns? Well, everyone has patterns that they run that are serving them at some level and holding them back at some level. Mm -hmm. And my mom definitely ran a pattern of um, belittling herself and saying you know things like i'm not smart or i'm stupid or you know i'm not book smart um, your, your mom would say my that. mom would say oh. these things and she would also always say um you know you're a better version of me like you know uh. she'd always kind of take it off of her and and that she's not really good enough but she also was proud that she raised really great kids um and it was just a pattern like she would I think she diminished herself. Diminished herself to kind of feel like she's giving to others in some ways, uh -huh. and I think, um, I, I and I think she really believed it. I mean, she would always say, you know, oh, ask your dad; he's good at that stuff. He does the money. Oh, I don't know about that. And my mom was really uninvolved with the with money stuff. Um, uh, uninvolved. Totally uninvolved. Uh -huh. Yeah, and just 
the financial juice, the, the next show is going to be great because it's perfect. People get to see my parents. Um, <laughs> you'll see these patterns like right there. So, so what, what do you tell somebody? Like when you're working with someone, who, who would come to you for advice today, like in your business? Uh, most people who come to me are, well, I, I typically work with couples, individuals too, but mostly couples who don't communicate well about money. There's tension in the relationship because of it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they make good money, and it's very similar to what you talk about in your 10x book. Um, just that they're middle class, yeah. make, I mean, six figure incomes, great money, are yeah. totally in the rat race, totally struggling, can't seem to get by, maybe can't right. pay their kids tuition or whatever and feel like they just can't get control of their money those are the people that come to me because uh, it's typically that they don't they don't follow the four keys my four keys to a richer relationship um, like they don't have clarity of their money and once they get the clarity and they communicate better and they follow these steps what what gives you I mean I had, I had a guy he wanted to do some finance some investing for me I'm like yeah. I, okay well how much money you got and he's like what do you mean how much money I said how much money do you have yeah and he's like, what's that got to do with it? I'm like, you want to invest my money, how much money you got? I mean, I'm looking for somebody who's got more than I have to do something. So what gives Robin Crane, why you? Why should people listen to Robin Crane about money well, and relationships? The, yeah, the main, I would say the main reason is because um, I have my own huge money issues uh -huh. that I had to overcome. You know, I used to be extremely anxious and worried about money. Um, I was actually single in my 20s for about 10 years from like 20s to into my 30s and because of all those struggles I had to find a way to overcome them and also as you mentioned with financial planning it's kind of like what is that you have to have money to be able to help financial planner there's this gap it's like there people are out there that are supposedly um, certified even or right. or have the uh, ability to invest your money and expertise supposedly to invest your money but it that's like such a small part of your wealth I mean it's you who controls your wealth it's your the patterns that you uh -huh. run the things that you do your beliefs your behaviors the, um, but some of the patterns can be good right they're, yeah they're they're typically good and bad I mean, yeah because uh, you wouldn't run them if they weren't serving you right 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 even my right. mom by saying she's stupid well, well she got some love from that uh -huh. and got some attention from yeah, that. yeah 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 no, I'm not stupid you know you're you're amazing, and, uh -huh. and right, there's right, a reason right. she had she had that. Um, but to answer your question, uh, I went through that myself. You know, I had plenty of issues. I I didn't like to spend money. I got nervous. I lost some relationships because of it, um, and I had to figure out a way to overcome my own issues so that it wouldn't ruin my life. It wouldn't ruin my relationship. And now I'm. Very blessed. Have a great, wonderful relationship with my husband. We have a great quality of life, um, and we've done that because we've been able to face the real challenges and overcome them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I help people do. I mean, I can invest people's money. That, that that's fine. I mean, that's you know, I don't. But you're even... saying what you're doing is you're helping people confront the issues that are blocking them from having money, wealth, accumulation, exactly. multiplication. So, so like, what is the big the common theme you see keeping somebody preventing somebody from being the person they need to be to have the money they want like what specifically what do I need to do back? what do I need to do for myself I want some more money I love money I gotta tell you do people do you think people love money well I think most people have a terrible relationship with money I, I, absolutely so they might say they love it but they have I think they hate beliefs. money I think most people hate money I was just talking to one of your big fans, Warren. He has a yeah, show called yeah, Teen Tycoon. Yeah, yeah. He just interviewed me, and he was saying um, a lot of his friends say money isn't important. Uh -huh. And I said, well, having that belief, money isn't important, is basically telling your financial future that, you know, forget it, I don't need money. Why don't just keep me broke? Yeah. You know, that's fine. So, See, I think people don't like money because I watch what they do with it. They get it, and then they give it to somebody else immediately. I'm like, dude, if you like something, why would you give it away? I like my dog. I don't go give it to somebody else, right? It's exactly like a relationship, you know. I talk about this, like it, being in an intimate relationship. If you treat them poorly, if you don't pay attention to them, if they don't think they're important, if you ignore them, if right. you don't, uh, pay, I mean, all those things, they're going to leave you. Totally. They're gone. Money, Money is a jealous, exactly envious, insecure. It wants to be paid attention to yeah. and touched and loved. coddled and loved and 
and then it'll multiply. If you ignore it, you agree with this? Yeah. Absolutely. That's one of my main, main uh, part of my system. We're going to come back and talk about the four keys to a richer relationship, and we're going to talk about the four C's. I hope one of them's not what I think it is. You're watching Power Players. <laughs> Welcome back to Power Players. Grant Cardone here. I have with me Robin Crane, host of Financial G Spot. Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Get your husband, get your spouse, get your lover, the two Johnnies get together, however y'all do it at home. Listen to Robin, Financial G-Spot at Whatever it Takes Network. You've seen on Fox Business, Motley Crue, Motley Fool, not Motley, Motley Crue, yeah. Mo Motley Fool, sorry, okay? That was when I was a singer-songwriter. She's an author of How to Overcome Your Money Issues. What are the four keys to a richer relationship? Four keys. And the four C's. And, and their C's. So, yeah, okay. four C's, four keys. So that makes it really easy. So number one, the first key is clarity, which is exactly what we're talking about. So there are two parts to clarity, and it's clarity of your money types, of these money types, I'll tell you about in a sec, and clarity of your money. So really understanding the numbers, like tracking is so huge. People don't do it. It's like changes everything. I look at my money twice a week. I love looking every at my account, money. Every account, every <laughs> so account. Like, Where's it at? What's it doing? Where's it going? Yeah. And at it's empowering. Does. Now, a lot of people think Unless it's, it's not. Zero. Well, it's, then it's not so empowering. That's what people think. But when I work with people, even when it's negative, I yeah. mean, I worked with. Uh, you got to confront it. Yeah, she, this right. one woman, 27 years old, had over sixty thousand dollars in debt, and worked with her a couple sessions, and she increased her net worth by thirty thousand dollars in one day. How'd you do that? Wow, clarity, paying attention. It was. She's got clarity and then she was starting to talk about it and she was empowered and she was talking to her aunt about it, her great aunt about it, and boom, just like that. She said, oh, I'll pay off your student loan. Track well, boom. Number two. Yeah, clarity. So cl I said clarity also about your money type. So there's five that two? different, that's, two? that's within clarity. Okay, okay. So well, five different money one. types. Like I'm buying a ring. I Clarity's clarity. one, yeah. Okay, okay. So money types, we can, we can talk about later. They can okay. get in the book. It's all, right, all in the book. All right. um, and then number two is communication. So communication, that means communicating how you communicate to yourself. I mentioned the language patterns, like uh -huh. using my mom as an example. We all do it. What do you say to yourself? I hear people saying all the time, I'm broke. Well, yes, then you're right. You know, so language patterns you say to yourself um, and how you communicate with your partner, assuming you're, if you're in a relationship, or how you will communicate with your partner. Um, that's number two. And even if you're not with, sleeping with somebody every night, yeah. You know, uh, you're still you're still communicating with somebody about money. Yeah, and Friends. it doesn't always have to be. Yeah, you're, that's exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. It doesn't Mom, have to dad, be a uncles, aunts, partner. I'm broke. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money won't make you happy. I mean, there's so many of them. First of all, most do you know where money comes from? Other people? No. <laughs> that's an do you know, answer. I've heard. You know the old saying, "Money doesn't grow on trees." Yeah. You'll use this a thousand times now. Okay. Money actually does come from trees. Okay. Yeah. The paper the paper was built for it was uh, from a cotton from cotton bushes. Yeah. So money grows on, on trees. cotton bushes. Okay. And money comes from other people. Yeah, that's right. Like I can give you some or not. <laughs> I, I, hey, I don't have enough, so I'd love to have some more. <laughs> so, okay, number three. Number three is creation. Mm -hmm. So getting clear about your goals, creating what is it that you want in your life, getting clear about where you are, but also where you want to be and having that path to, to get there. Um, and then the last one's well, yeah. Well, why do you think people struggle with with that piece right there? Even spending any time or energy confronting and creating, like, what do I want? Because I see people talk about, I set my goals. Really, when? Who I do them in January? Right, right, right. And I'm right. like, why? Why is there no more create other than January? I'm right. I write my goals down twice a day in this little planner. Yeah. Twice a day, every day. Why? Why do you think people don't spend time in that creation? I I think it's um it's it's just this symptom of playing small like people are just in this habit I mean so much of what you talk about just this playing average like mediocrity and just accepting this this life as if you can't get beyond it I mean someone called on my radio show and she said I you know my my son's uh, uh, college tuition that we can't pay we make too much money to get the uh, FAFSA the, all, all the um, what it, financial yeah, aid yeah, stuff sure. Um, and she's just totally in the rat race, and she thinks there are no options because you know she's thinking of like how do I get a loan somehow instead of thinking of how can I grow my income. 
Uh, they just assume, well, I have this degree, or I have this, and this is my option, I can make this much money, and then that's just it. So it's kind of like, why dream big when you're not going to reach those goals? Right, right. I think people just settle. No doubt. Number four. <laughs> I know you agree with that. No, uh, you know I agree <laughs> with that. Number four. I settled most of my life. I mean, the first 35 years I was in business. I mean, not 35, 25 years for sure. Yeah. Last 10 I've been hitting pretty hard. But, um, number, number four. Number four, commitment. Uh -huh. So it's great you have a plan, you yep. got to commit to it, so that's all about the follow through. And when I'm talking about specifically in, in intimate relationships, it's being committed to each other. So many people have one foot out the door. Yeah. It's like, oh, I want our relationship to work and the money's causing it, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Well, you got to just commit to it, assume uh -huh. it is, do everything you can, and follow through. Same you, you talked about, so the four C's are clarity, communication, creation, and commitment. Okay. Yeah. You, you talked about a couple that you were working with that was making a hundred plus thousand dollars a year and still broke. How many people do you know like that? That are making, they're the top five or six percent of the earners on the planet and still no money. Yeah, I mean, I, I launched my business in California in the Silicon Valley. So most of my clients were there and that's exactly, that is the prototype. You know, you're like, well, really? Yeah, you can make like a hundred grand a year in Taco Bell. Yeah. Silicon Valley. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> Might be an exaggeration. And, and you can't pay your rent. You're right. Um, right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I had clients making almost half a million dollars a year and barely putting, you know, money in their 401k. And um, Why? Well, what's happening? Well, it's choices. It's all uh, about choices. And some of those choices are current, and some of those choices are choices they made, you know, years before, like which house to buy. Uh, you know, $10,000 a month in just... Uh, fixed expenses just to pay the mortgage to pay the card. Oh, well, I have to pay these expenses because of choices They made right. years before and then choices. They're currently making I have to send my kids to this uh, Camp I have to do this they they've defaulted now to having all these expenses that they think is no longer a choice But that's why these four keys are so awesome because once you get clarity of it and you start to communicate and you get clear about your goal I mean all this then they actually have a choice again. So let me ask you some questions that I have very strong opinions on with regards to finances, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, college. Should people borrow money to go to college? I think that's okay. Yeah, should they go to college? Should people sure. go to college? Sure, but Why? they don't have to. Okay. They shouldn't go to college. Why should I go to college? They shouldn't go to, the, go to college with the assumption that going to college is going to make them money. Uh huh. But the assumption so that go going to college? to college is going to bring wealth. Um, you can, it's just like, why should you do anything? It's an experience. I mean, I enjoyed my experience in college. I enjoyed learning. I enjoyed the friends that I made. Did it change my life? Yes, because everything has changed my life. Yeah. But, you know, I also went to Tony Robbins University, you know, Master University, which was a completely different experience. And I would say, if I had to choose, I'd probably say everyone should do that instead of college. Uh -huh. Because there's so much more to learn in personal development that will help you in your life than just traditional education. Okay, so now, should I buy a house? Should you buy a house? Yeah. See, I'm like a big depends girl because I, not like I wear depends. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Gonna make um, that financial G spot. But should you buy a house? <laughs> I, I, I would say yes, but I don't know your situation. You know, if someone comes. Well, to should me, the should should the I average American be buying buy a house? house. This I is what I see happen. I see I the think average American. Are great. You, do you think it's an asset? I do. Yeah. A house. I do. They How's actually it pay asset? it off. Well, nobody can pay their house off today. Okay. Yeah, people. Average price of a home is what two hundred and fifty thousand. Two sixty four. Who's going to pay? How do you pay cash for that? Well, I'm not saying like, and then, like one and go, but I, I mean, why pay rent your whole life and you have? Because I would have the money. I would have the money to invest back into my business because my business makes me money. Makes me so money. So you're you're assuming that the mortgage is much more than the rent. No, I, I say if it was even, I rent right now. I rent. I, I pay. I mean, my rent's stupid, but. I have all that capital to keep working and growing. Well, most people won't take all that capital to keep working and growing. So You're saying so the house basically is a way to save and protect money because they, they don't have the discipline to do the right things with the money. You've given up on people. <laughs> I, 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 I have not given up on people, 
But I do, I do think a lot of people will, will continue to run their patterns. They have to make a conscious decision. I don't know buy, that buying a house or not buying a house is the decision that they need to make to determine like their financial future. It's whether or not you, you want to build your business, you make it happen. Right, you right. Build your business. So, so um, if, if, if they some, bought a house, I don't think that's going to say, oh, now you can't build your business. You bought uh -huh. a house. What would you tell somebody to do first? Build your business or buy a house? I, I would say, do what you what's going to make you more money. Right. Follow so, the money, man. Build a business. That needs to be your fifth. But, follow the money but with don't, a seat. Don't build a business and then don't get to work, you know? Right. It's like so many people are like, oh, I'm going to just start a business so I have more freedom. And then they don't do all the things they need to do to get the business going and make it happen. Debt. Okay, where, where does somebody borrow money or not borrow money? I mean, are these too hard to answer? Like, I, I like debt. You like debt? Yeah. Okay. I like debt using it properly. I just, most people don't know how. Most people think that debt is like a, just a cash machine, you know, just a way to, to pay for things you don't have the money for. So that's not a good way to use debt. But I mean, I've heard a lot of financial experts say, oh, just use a check card, don't use credit cards, ever. Mm -hmm. I just don't agree with that because I don't do it. So how can I, I say I, that? I would never use a debit card. No, because get miles, get something. If get somebody benefit, violates right? that yeah. debit card, they get that cash, I can't get it back. If they violate my credit card, yeah, too. Yeah. then I get to call Amex and say, hey, I didn't buy that. Put that money back, you know, it's not my problem. Yeah. So where- I where, say use it as leverage, you know? Yeah, totally. Coca-Cola used it, Caterpillar don't used use it. it Dave Ramsey's expense. the guy telling you not to use it. Billionaires use debt, use debt all, yeah. Totally, yeah, right? Yeah, Dave Ramsey is exactly- See, people tell me, man, a plane is a terrible, terrible investment. I don't know the top 500 richest people on this planet they all have planes. I'm like, why do they have, what are they doing? But everybody else says, don't buy a plane. I'm like, they got planes? Because they're using them to make money. And they all use debt. And yeah. some of them own homes, some of them own a bunch of homes, but they're so wealthy at that point. That I mean, some, some people say, you own a home, you own it outright, you have no debt. I mean, it's just, and there are billionaires that say that, and billionaires who have, uh, have a lot of debt. But How most, important, if you look back, the, the messages that your mom and dad gave you about money, okay? What are the three things they told you that held you back and, and, and were part of this pattern? The three things that they, they told me that held me back? That was good for your dad, help your dad get where he was mm -hmm. in that upper middle class, but actually prevented you from maybe doing some things you wanted to do. Um, it's hard for me to think of three because they were they were great, like totally supported me always. I mean, I, w I was a singer songwriter. They said go do it, you know. They didn't say don't do that, don't follow your dreams, be more practical. Uh -huh. So my parents were very supportive in letting me do what I thought I should do, but um, they definitely were more realistic. And I would say, not that they said be realistic, yeah, but, but I, I could feel. The you're more, talking like, about the kind of realistic that prevents big expansion. Yeah, to a certain degree. I mean, I remember when I first, you know, started financial planning and I was um, having dinner with my dad and I said something like, oh, I know I can make $300,000. And he said, well, so go do it. Like, he actually totally supported it. And I would right, have right. thought my dad would have said, why don't you start with 100 right, grand right, first right, and right, see right. how that goes. But he didn't. So I actually feel like they did allow me to dream big. But just, it's not always what you say, it's what you do. Yeah. You know, my, my, my dad had a very good steady job making very good money in the Silicon Valley and my mom was a pre-kindergarten teacher making hardly anything, you know, and that's what they did. It was very standard, make money, save a lot, and you'll be fine. And that's what I learned because that's what they showed me, you know, how to do. Robin, uh, so your show is 8 p.m. Wednesday nights, Financial G-Spot. What are people going to learn from watching that show? Well, you really get. And why do you call it the financial G spot? I call it the financial G spot because people are all over the place, right? They can't focus. Everybody seems to think like you know, if you're in a business, they're chasing shiny pen pennies, you know, not not staying focused and going after what they need to go after to get them the result. And so the financial G spot is all about focusing on that special spot that's going to help you break through, have your money, or is it going to be that hard to find though? <laughs> it's sometimes that thing hard moves to find. around a lot, <laughs> doesn't it? You would know. I hope. <laughs> so, so, okay, so Wednesdays, 8 p.m., whatever yeah. it takes network, what is somebody, three things they're going to get from that show every time they go to it? Well, you're going to get motivation, number one. Mm -hmm. You're going to see people who are struggling with money. Who You, you interview people in the yeah, show. Yeah, work with people on the okay. show. Yeah, yeah. So you get to get motivation. Um, you'll get to recognize patterns within the, yourself <coughs> by watching them. Uh, and the third thing I would say is you'll get specific tips on what you can do so that you can start to shift your own patterns. So now, now every show you're interview, you're actually looking into somebody's finances. So it's not like you're talking. No, I'm more looking into their like issues. 
you oh, know. Oh, you I look don't, at the, don't take the time, like, in that period to, like, uh -huh. look at the actual money, but it's basically, Maybe you've got it's it. written all over their face. <laughs> oh, yeah? What's written on my face about money? What that you, you want more, man. There's never yeah. going to be enough, but that's ne awesome. Never? You think, is that, like, some kind of insecurity I have going on? That's what people tell yeah. me. Yeah. I don't think it's an insecurity. I mean, I'm sure you have plenty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That, but look, we you all know what? Do. For we me, for me, it's about look. It's out there. I know it's out there. That's why I do this show. It, I, I, I got got to sit there, sit here. Came with nothing. Hundred million, man. It's worth a hundred mil, and all he did was work hard, push, shove, create exchanges with his customers. I hear it every day, and I'm like, dude, it's out there. Why shouldn't I get some of that? Yeah. And Somebody's that's exactly, gonna get it, right? I mean, that's exactly what I see with you is yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's not about I mean the millions and millions you get which is nice but and even the things that you do with it it's like what I see maybe I'm wrong I don't know you that yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. but what I see is this like drive like how can I not do that like that's who I am meant to be if yeah. someone else can do it I should be able to do it and I will do that and I won't yeah. stop until I get it so um, that's awesome the more money you make the more people you help so yeah exactly you and, and that's we why yeah I'm so glad to have you both on the network and on power players today because I do want to help people because that's another way to be wealthy, really, is like, how many people can I help? I know they're out there to help. That's the fastest way. And this space is like, hey, how can I interview people like you that can give people inspiration and guidance? Hey, you heard it from Robin Crane, How to Overcome Your Money Issues is the book. I want you to go buy it right now. I don't want you to wait. I don't want you to procrastinate. I want you to get the book. Don't worry about all the books you didn't read, you didn't finish, you didn't complete. How to Overcome Your Money Issues. We'll give you a link here today. Robin Crane, Financial G-Spot, every Wednesday night, four keys to a richer relationship. Before I leave you, one piece of advice you would give a, a, a couple. One thing, if they could only take away one thing today about money and their relationship. Total transparency about the finances. Total clarity. Even if you're not making it and you know your husband or your wife is making the money or one spending it, total transparency because then you can open the conversation and start talking So about now, it. when my wife goes online and buys a bunch of stuff one night, and I say, what'd you spend? Should she be, should she know? Should she know what she spends or what you spend? How much, no, no. Oh. It is what I spend, okay? Should she be able to answer should that Should she question? know how much the order was for? Oh, well, you know. Just look at the she, camera and say, Elena, <laughs> you should know how much Well, you, you should be able to look it up. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> And totally know. Hey, next week, another power player. Stay with me every week. I deliver to your power player. Somebody that can help you add power to your life, your finances, your business. Next week, who knows? Maybe you just blow up and show up next week and sit in that chair. Thanks for watching Power Players or whatever it takes network.